Welcome to the Real Estate Syndication Show. Whether you are a seasoned investor or building a new real estate business, this is the show for you. Whitney Sewell talks to top experts in the business. Our goal is to help you master real estate syndication. And now your host, Whitney Sewell. This is your daily real estate syndication show. I'm your host, Whitney Sewell. Today, our guest is Steve Arneson. Thanks for being on the show, Steve. Whitney, I'm stoked to be here, man. Yeah, glad to have you on the show, Steve. A little about him. If you haven't heard of him before, he's a co-founder of the real estate uh, inspiration company called The Reinvestors. His focus is cash producing real estate assets with high upside and low risk. He loves to educate and inspire others to not only pursue their real estate goals, but to 10x their goals so they can go big to give big. I love that. love that motto. Uh, he raised over $4 million in capital over four years. Most recently raised $750,000 in 48 hours for a 12-lot single-family home development project. But I love the motto, Steve, uh, to go big, to give big. And uh, just some stuff we were talking about before the show. I mean, I just uh, love you. Just your mindset to give back. And I'm looking forward to getting into that today. Uh, give the listeners a little more about who you are. Tell them where you're located and your, your focus. And let's dive into how you've, you've been so su successful raising capital. Yeah, right on. Thanks for that great intro. Uh, so I'm from Victoria, British Columbia, up here in the Great White North. Uh, it's basically just north of Seattle. Uh, they're pretty much neighbors to us. And um, yeah, born and raised right here. It's a great little part of the country. Um, West Coast, island vibe, super chill. Uh, our, our city is about 380,000 people. So small compared to a lot of markets uh, across North America. Uh, but we've really found a really cool niche here and have really uh, become experts in our space here. And uh, a big piece of that is just our commitment to just delivering back value to our community. And a big piece of that is our motto, go big to give big. Love that. So, you know, let's go back a little bit to, you know, how did you get started raising capital or, you know, doing larger deals? Tell us a little bit about that process so we can dive in and the listener can understand, you know, how you've been successful, uh, you know, with working with investors and raising capital. But let's go back to, you know, how, how did you learn that process and get started into, into raising capital? Yeah, well, Square One, like a lot of my family's from like the real estate industry and uh, they all do really well. And so just naturally, I was kind of like, uh, born into the industry and had to kind of like carve my own piece into it. So uh, investing is kind of where I fell. Um, and my business partner, Randy Mullen, uh, he invited me out to one of those kind of like weekend guru courses. And I was like, Oh dude, this is a total scam for sure. And uh, so we went to like the two hour free thing. We ended up buying like a thousand dollar weekend package. And out of the three days, it was like the end of the second day where my mind was just blown. And I was like, Holy crap. Like, we like using OPM, other people's money is a real thing. They taught us the whole strategy, you know, gave us a little bit of a teaser to upsell us into like their, their bigger mem um, membership piece, but we committed to it. So I think at that time it was um, 18 or $20,000 to, to be a part of it. And there was this like education platform. Um, it was called Keyspire. It's mainly Canadian, but it is um, like East States as well. Um, and it really just teaches you how to, all the fundamentals of income properties and how to look for joint venture partners. And when you're looking for joint venture partners, you're asking for, for other people's money. And so when you're bringing out multiple partners, it's the same thing as a syndication kind of thing. So that was kind of where it all started. And uh, Randy and I had just uh, purchased our own houses, uh, both investment properties, uh, like fix and flip, live and flips type things. Um, and his was a more so traditional income property. And, um, once we got into this group called Keyspire, we realized because we'd already been really studying real estate investing, we realized that kind of we were coaching our coach in that program. And so we looked for an alternative and we ended up investing another $10,000 uh, into a mentorship with uh, a mentor that we've been working under for the last four years now. Um, great guy, Ray Ostrander, huge love and support for him. Um, and he was really like the, the bread and butter coach for us. And so he taught us, uh, a lot of the sales tactics out of it, you know, how to communicate uh, with investors, how to go to somebody and approach them and say, Hey, you know, um, can we have $200,000 of your money for, for this type of, uh, of development? Um, and has walked us all the way through the process from buying a single family to buying apartment buildings. And um, we started off uh, our first one was a half a duplex with two suites. 
And then now we've, uh, since then over the last four years, we've done apartment buildings and we're kind of now graduating into development deals as well. So we have a low rise 30 unit uh, apartment building, uh, purpose built rental that we're just about to take on as a project as well as a 12 lot subdivision. So uh, it's been a heck of a ride so far and I'm glad that it's just the beginning of it. Yeah. So I think it's awesome. You know, you, you found a mentor or, or you educated yourself, you found a, a program, you, you, do, you dove into that, but then you found you, you needed, you needed somebody that was a little further along. Um, so you, you learn the fundamentals and, and I'll tell the listeners too, like in Canada, they don't have the normal syndication process or uh, SEC uh, regulations like, like we do in the States. So a little different, but, but it's more mm-hmm. joint venture, right? Or typical. Joint ventures in, uh, in limited partnerships are, are typically what you see. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, but, you know, you, you found another mentor and, and, and I, I just find so many people, uh, you know, once they find a mentor that can really uh, help them, uh, that's way ahead of them. I mean, it just it speeds up their process so much, you know, um, yeah. but, you know, tell me, let's dive in a little bit to, you know, how he was teaching you and how you've been successful, you know, having those conversations with investors, you know, that first deal is usually the hardest, you know, you're trying to, you know, talk to investors and you, you have no track record, um, and, you know, lead us through that a little bit and how, how you were advised to do it and how you were successful. I think he gave us the example of going on a date. And as soon as you go and pick up your date, you don't immediately hop into bed together. I mean, maybe on Tinder days, yes, but, uh, you know, in a traditional relationship, that's not how it works. Uh, whereas it is a relationship game. So, you know, if the end goal is to form a partnership, you can call that a marriage because a lot of times our projects are years and years and years. Uh, so we're really, you know, uh, diving into a, a deeper relationship, not just a one night stand. So it's how do you, how do you build the fundamentals of a solid uh, working relationship, someone that stands on integrity and trust. And so um, we don't just walk into uh, you know a, a early phone call or early meeting and say, hey, give me all your money for this awesome deal. Here's the details of it. We really start from uh, understanding where they're, where they're at. And I think that's a huge piece that a lot of amateur investors get wrong is they just go through the Rolodex and go, hey, you want to give me money? Hey, you want to give me money? Hey, you want to give me money? And Sure, sometimes that might work, but uh, our model is more so let's build a long-term relationship so that we do our first deal together and we knock it out of the park so hard that all you have to do on our next deals that come down the pipe is just ask, hey, does this pass the Steve test? We give them the thumbs up and they're like, yeah, I trust you because of the relationship that we have. Um, Now let's move forward on to the next one. So that was a huge one. Um, Follow-up has been one of the biggest things for us, just staying in touch with people um, you know, a lot of people don't really have sales background or experience when they're jumping into, into real estate. Um, I know a lot of engineers that, that invest in real estate, so I don't know if it's, uh, just the analytical piece of it or not, but, uh, and, uh, usually engineers aren't really, uh, people persons or, or salespeople. And, uh, so if you can kind of brush up your sales, uh, communication and tactics and, and negotiation, uh, for anybody who hasn't read the, what's it called? Um, Chris Voss's book, Never Split the Difference. Yes. Um, probably the most influential book on my business. Uh, you know, I've read Rich Dad Poor Dad and, you know, uh, Compound Effect and all the traditional standards. But when it comes to sales and negotiations, um, that book, by far, easiest bang for your buck. Love so, that. I appreciate you recommending that. Chris is going to be on the show pretty soon oh, uh, as well. Yeah. So I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. It gives me a chance to let the listeners know that that is coming. Uh, yeah. but, uh, but I love that. Could you elaborate on your follow-up process? I, and I, I want to back up too. like just thinking about it, like, you know, like a date almost, uh, it, it helps because you're, yeah you know, you're not trying to just get right down to the, you know, to the deal, to closing this deal, to the, getting their investment money on the first conversation, right? Yeah. It's just getting to know them. And, and even if it's a short conversation or two or, or whatever, but, uh, um, you know, tell us a, about your follow-up process. I'd love to learn more about that. Yeah. So I'll, I'll touch on the follow-up process. I just want to touch on something too about the, the initial conversation. Um, a lot of my initial conversation with people is just getting to know them as individuals. Who do they, do they have kids? Are they family people? Where do they live? Uh, what do they like doing for fun? And I take notes through all of that. And this is where I'll segue into the, into the follow-up. When I do follow-ups, typically it's like, you know, a couple of days after our first meeting or our first call, I'll follow up with just the, Hey, it was great talking with you. You know, uh, you know, 
uh, I'll send you some more details on our upcoming project that we spoke about briefly uh, over the next couple of days. Um, if you have any questions whatsoever regarding any kind of real estate, uh, you know, if I don't know the answer, I guarantee you I know somebody who does. So just give me a shout, give me a text message, send me an email with your questions and I'll get those answered for you as quickly as possible. That's usually my first kind of come around. And then on my next follow up, what I'll do is I'll kind of like stalk them on Facebook for a second and just see what they've done recently. So it'll usually be a week or two that goes by, maybe a month, depending on what we kind of spoke about uh, on the initial call or initial meeting. And I'll just, uh, I'll go through that as a bit of a reminder for me. I'll have my notes and I'll be like, yeah, you know, I met up with Steve and he likes skydiving and hockey and being out in the woods and listening to cool music. And so I'll use one of those pieces to build, I'll basically, uh, I'll find a, a common piece of, of interest and that'll become my foundation. So if Steve likes, you know, hockey, great. I'm going to use hockey as a foundation piece. And I'm going to follow up and say, hey, man, did you watch the hockey game, the Canucks, Bruins, Red Wings, you know, uh, Nashville, wherever you're at. And um, that's usually like a really great, um, what do you call them? Like just door opener. Something that you can have immediate, quick, fun, light conversation with uh, to get the other person on the other side of the conversation in a, in a good mood. And you kind of have a little joke about it. Be like, oh, yeah, the Canucks, you know, kicked ass in the game. And be like, aha, Bruins suck. <laughs> you can kind of see where I land here a little bit, but, <laughs> um, and, and kind of use that common piece of interest as our foundation to build on. And, uh, that's probably the number one tip is find that, that mutual piece and, and build off of that and, uh, and make sure that you, you send them pieces on like their birthday or, you know, if they, if they mention that their, their daughter had a dance recital next week or they're going to Mexico, just send them a quick message, like, you know, jot it down in your calendar. It's super easy. You just grab your phone. You say, hey, Siri, remember me to do this. And, uh, and then, you know, it takes you 30 seconds to send us a quick message saying, hey, I hope you had a great trip to Mexico. Hope your daughter had a great recital, whatever it looks like. And on the other side of things, when they receive that, they're like, holy cow, this guy's going above and beyond just on communication. I can't wait to see what they do in, in real estate. Love that. All right, so, uh you know, what I see there though, is like, is you're spending extra time, right? I mean, yeah. you're going another step there than what most are going to do as opposed to just that first conversation. And it's usually what I see is, you know, Hey, how you doing? Hey, what do you do? Well, what do you do? Uh, you know, I'm in multifamily real estate and this is what we do. And, and like, it's a sales pitch somewhat the whole time. And that's the last time they ever hear that person, you know, yeah. until they have a deal. And then right. all of a sudden, you know, they're inundated with, with emails about an opportunity, right? But there's mm -hmm. no relationship built. Um, and so I love how you are, you're focused uh, and you're taking the time. I even mentioned going back to Facebook or whatever to learn some, some place. You said that was like the key point there to find that, that foundational piece uh, or, or, or a common piece of interest, you said. Uh, yeah. I love that. Uh, it's such a great, great piece of advice. Uh, but I wanted to even go back a little further because I didn't ask, well, how did you meet that investor? How, how are you finding most of those? Uh, and what's been the, the best way for you to do that? Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, with, with social media being so impactful these days, it's easy to hop onto, you know, commercial real estate or syndication groups. Um, there's usually a group for your particular town, city or state, province up here in Canada. Um, and so you can just, you know, search in Facebook, like, you know, real estate investing, Victoria, British Columbia, and a couple of groups will pop up. You hop in there and you start engaging, you start asking questions, you start direct messaging people who, who respond back to you and you start a conversation and that conversation then leads into, um, if you ask a lot of questions about them, you show interest in them, that other person is always happy to talk. If it's, if the spotlight's on me, I'm always happy to talk. And, um, so that's, that's an easy piece of it. You know, local meetups, getting face to face is you know, there's nothing more powerful than just shaking hands, maybe not while coronavirus is going on, but, uh, you know, being face to face with people, um, that's super easy, you know, talking to, to other investors in your area or, or across the country, you know, asking for referrals is, is another piece as well. Um, and then there's, there's, there's bigger types of groups where they're like mastermind groups or, or membership groups, you know, fortune builders is a huge one that comes to mind, uh, down in the States. Um, and so when you, when you get around, you know, like-minded people, and once you spend a year in the industry, you start realizing that um, you know, there's a lot of people out there, but the industry is still a, a small industry. So you want to make sure that your reputation stays high. 
you know, I guess dive in a little bit on that, especially right now while everybody's uh, quarantined, right? It's a great subject, you know, as far as being able to connect online and in those groups, you know, are you just messaging each other then just like Facebook Messenger or on LinkedIn? I mean, something like that. Yeah, I mean, a lot of what we do anyways is digital. So um, we had to, for the last four years, every month we've been running a, a real estate investing meetup here in Victoria. And it's just an educational component. There's no sales pitches. It's just we bring in experts in their space, whether it be lawyers, accountants, brokers, developers, whatever. Uh, we'll do a presentation. They'll do a presentation, and we'll just educate our community. Um, and for the first time ever, we had to pivot that because of coronavirus, and we would just did it on Zoom. So we just did a webinar style. Uh, we had a similar attendees, you know, 75 people or so. Um, hopefully next month, you know, because we'll go a little bit bigger, do a little bit more marketing online because we had to pivot real quick last time. We'll have more attendees, but. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty straightforward. You can send them a text message, do FaceTime, you know, LinkedIn, direct messages on Facebook, uh, Instagram, um, you send them emails, however you want to do it. And then, uh, I strongly believe that having face-to-face -face conversations is still the, the best way to build a relationship. So if you can encourage people to hop onto a zoom call and you can do it like, yeah, ha, Hey, let's have a coffee meeting. So anybody listening to the podcast, not watching the video, I got a coffee mug in my hand. So you can kind of have fun with it and like have a cup of coffee. Or if it's at seven o'clock at night, you know, you can pour yourself a cocktail and kind of have like a little more social, casual type of meeting. So we've done, you know, cocktail meetings before where, you know, there's like a couple on the other side and they've got their, their bottle of wine and I've got my nice beer or whatever. And uh, just have some fun with it, but make sure you're staying professional. Love that. Love that. Have a little fun with it. Uh, yeah. I, think, I think that just helps everybody to relax a little bit, right? And build a relationship. Uh, yeah. So, so, okay. So, you know, we've gone through that. You've met them, whether it's at the, at the, uh, the group or you know, online somewhere you've been messaging and, you know, you followed up, you found some common piece of interest. Um, you know, how often are you following up then after that? Yeah. So it kind of ranges. I, I, I prioritize the people that I want to communicate with. So if it's like one, two or three tiers. And so my top tier people, I'm probably talking to uh, almost on a weekly basis. Uh, especially if I have a project coming up in the next six months, um, I want to make sure that I'm on top of mind. I want to make sure that I know uh, if they have any kind of capital to, to, to use. And I want if they do, then I want to make sure that we're going to get that capital, not another person with, with another deal. So uh, if they're in my top tier, they're the people I'm communicating with um, and I spend most of my time with. Uh, in that kind of like middle tier, I'd say probably on a monthly basis, um, whether it be through email communication, you know, a lot of times uh, I start off um, pretty much every day. I'll just go for a 45 or, or 60 minute walk. Um, and a lot of times in the morning, I'll just, I'll just call people. And so I'll just walk into the park. I live right up against a really beautiful park here. Um, and I'll just you know, dial an investor that's on my mind and just have a quick conversation. Say, I hope you're doing well. You know, keeping safe in Corona. You know, hope you're making some good money and doing your thing. You know, have a great day. Talk again soon. And we won't talk for another month or two. And then that kind of bottom tier is more so like my nurture campaign. And so while I'm nurturing them, it's more so kind of like showing credibility, showing how active we're being, you know, a lot of, it's a little bit more about us at that point, trying to build our uh, reputation in their eyes um, versus the top two tiers where it's a little bit more uh, about them at that point. So uh, in that bottom tier we have, you know, I know a lot about them already. I kind of know what their, what their history is, what they're looking for. Um, and then it's just a matter of making sure that they recognize us as, uh, trusted sources. How are you asking them about their capital that's available? You know, and I love what you said about, you know, we want to make sure they have that capital available to invest with us and we're staying top of mind. And you mentioned like you, or maybe you want to know how much they, they have, or they're ready to invest or are you asking? Yeah, totally. Um, you know, I think it's, it's in both of your interests, you, the investor and, and me, the, you know, the, the, the deal maker or whatever you want to call me. Um, it's in both of our interests to make sure that we're protecting our own time. And so if you don't have cash ready or if you don't have any money at all, then I don't want to waste your time. I'm happy to support you and educate you, but me talking about a deal is going to be a complete waste of our time. So uh, in the early stages, uh, yeah, it, I'm, I'm pretty candid about it. And it's just like, Hey, uh, I want to be as polite as possible. So, and that's not just a Canadian thing. That's just a <laughs> business thing. Um, but it's, it's a simple community, uh, simple conversation. Like, Hey, you know, maybe we've been having a little bit of fun talking about, you know, the relationship aspect and, uh, and I want to transition it. So uh, pretty simple and straightforward. It's just, Hey, you know, uh, this has been great so far. Is it okay with you if I get a little bit more like personal and talk a little bit about finances and talk about the deal that we have coming up? 
usually they say yes because that's why we're talking and you know pretty much we're within the first couple of questions it's you know are you okay with sharing how much you have and what type of deal you're looking for and I just leave it up to them to be like yep yeah, you know maybe they'll softball it and say I've got 200 grand when they really got a million maybe they'll just open up their app and say here's my bank account and that's the dollar I have I've gotten both and other people will say like you know I'm, I'm not comfortable at this stage but you know as this grows um, you know I'm happy to share with that uh, with you later and so I'm pretty just straightforward and candid uh, we run a very transparent business um, and, uh, I think that's the best way to, to run business is here's my books. Here's my reputation. Here's everybody I've worked with. Fact check me all you want. Um, I'm as legit as it gets. Legit as it gets. Can you, can you give me an example there of, of just being, you know, just being open and very transparent or maybe what you're sharing with investors? Is that some type of, of investor booklet, you know, some people call it or something that, that you've developed that you're sending out or what does that look like? No, it's more so we don't have anything particularly made at this point. Um, we're, that's in the works right now, and it'll be a digital source um, that we can share with people. But it's just if you ask for it, you get it. So if you want to see our bank statement, sure, I'll send you a screenshot or something along those lines. If you want to see, uh, if you want to talk to investors that we've closed deals with before to, um, you know, to verify how the project went and how we communicated it through the way and, and just to do your due diligence, great, here's every investor we've worked with on a similar type of project. If you want to talk to the investor that hates us the most, great, here's their contact detail. And I can say that to people because there's nobody that hates us. And, um, you know, some deals are, are phenomenal. Some deals are just great. Um, but, uh, yeah, if, the, if a question is asked, we are, you know, we're, uh, we'll let you come behind the curtain and, and, uh, and take a look at whatever you want to see. So uh, there's a few more questions before we run out of time, Steve, uh, but sure. uh, you know, what's, what's been the hardest part of this? I usually say syndication process or, or a journey for most people, but you know, I know you all aren't technically syndicating, but kind of you are, uh, you know, what's been that the hardest part of this business or process for you? You know what, for us, it's been inventory um, in Victoria and on Vancouver Island where we live here in the West coast of, of British Columbia, the market's been so hot here since 2016, 17, where there's a thousand buyers for every two properties. And so it's uh, the types of bigger deals that we're looking for. Uh, we're competing with inter uh, not international, we're competing with um, uh, like big banks and institutional money. And so we really have to try to find this little small niche of like, you know, if it's a apartment building, it's gotta be between like six and 12. And that's just such a small niche to play in here on the island that, you know, one or two of those pop up every few months. And when it does, there's so many other people competing for it, or it's such a crappy deal because the building's in terrible condition, um, or there's no, no uh, forced appreciation that we could do or, or increase rent or anything like that to make the numbers better, that we invest some time into doing our due diligence. We have to walk away uh, because we don't like the deal for whatever reason. And so finding the inventory has been actually the hardest problem. Uh, we've got lots of money that we can spend and deploy. Um, it's just, we don't have a whole lot of place to, to put it right now. And I understand that. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people do, right? And, you know, perhaps coronavirus will kind of calm that down a little bit. I'm not sure. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it's made us pivot a lot. So it's, it's kept us on our toes over the last four years since we've been doing this full time as a business. And um, I think that's probably one of the things I'm most grateful for is just having a business partner with an open mind and investors with open minds as well saying like, hey, you know, this particular space is, is closed now uh, because of these reasons. We have to pivot and go look in this, uh, this, type of, this type of area. So we've been very agile in that sense, and it's been um, to our benefit. Nice. So tell me how, uh, so I usually ask you know, how, how, how someone prepared for a potential downturn, but, but I'd like to know, you know, in, in this case, or, you know, where we're at right now in, in the unknown market, uh, you know, how, how were you all preparing for a potential downturn and what does that look like now? Yeah. Um, so the spaces in which we work, we're, we're typically looking for the majority of our business is, is cash producing assets. So it's income properties, it's uh, apartment buildings that have immediate cash flow there. So in my mind, that really insulates us because we have a very low vacancy rate in Victoria. We're about just under 1%. And uh, so we don't have any real big fears of, of that spiking anytime soon and going to eight, 10, 12% um, and just having income disappear. 
Uh, and we also don't predict any significant losses in rents either. So we're pretty cushioned in a sense of, of the income that's gonna come in from the deals that we pursue. Um, and, and we've built a lot of our business to make sure that we have um, some liquidity ready to rock and roll. So cash is king in a recession. And I can't remember who, but somebody smart once said millionaires are made in recessions. And so from day one, we knew um, that eventually there's going to be a, rece a recession. So from step one, we've prepared ourselves knowing that we need to make sure that we're ready. And for us, that means let's have money available for us because right now we can go buy product on a discount. If I can go buy a house that, or a property that's usually a million bucks and I can get it for you know, 750, sweet. I know within the next 10 years, it's going to be at that million dollars again or higher. Um, here specifically, there's never been a 10 year period of time where real estate hasn't increased in value. Mm. So uh, I'm just chomping at the bit, waiting for um, inexperienced people to start to panic. And I'm going to provide them a solution. And that solution is just going to come at a discount. Yep. We all better be prepared and have, have some cash on hand. That's for sure. Uh, yeah, so, we, go ahead. I was going to say, uh, we've, we've told a lot of our investors over the last uh, year and a half specifically uh, to sell a couple of assets that, you know, don't uh, operate extremely well, you know, find the run to the family and cut it. And whatever that, uh, that profit there is there to sit on that, put it in something super liquid that you're not going to lose on and just get ready for, uh, you know, to go deal shopping. Great advice. Just a couple of quick questions uh, yep. before we have to go, Steve. Uh, what's a way that you've recently improved your business that we could apply to ours? Um, I'd say Audible. Um, I, I love reading, uh, but often I find that Audible is a lot faster to digest. So I can crush through a book in two days versus it taking me a month. And so I am constantly trying to learn. Um, the more you learn, the more you earn. And uh, so I'm constantly trying to, uh, to learn and, and to grow myself. And Audible has been one of the best resources for me uh, this past year. How fast do you listen? Uh, usually 1.5, sometimes two, depending on the speaker. Okay. Yeah, me yeah. too. Love it. Yeah. yeah. So tell me, you know, what's the one thing that's contributed to your success? Yeah, investing in my own education. It's been huge. It's been the number one thing. So uh, I started off the, this podcast, this episode here, you know, talking about Keyspire and that investment, that $18,000 to get into the, the, the membership piece, the extra 10,000 for the mentor. And since then, uh, between Randy and I and our company, we've spent over an additional $120,000, $130,000 on masterminds and just our own, our own education, whether that be in business or sales or, or marketing or you know, mostly specifically business and real estate. But invest in yourself and you'll get like pretty much an infinite return on investment. That's the, some of the best advice I've probably heard all week right there. That's, <laughs> I, I could not, I just told my wife this morning, we were up early every morning. That's when we read and we'll, you know, uh, get through our day or plan our day and things like that. And I just, I just told her this morning, you know, like any, any massive improvement I see in people, like including myself, it started with me. Yeah. You know, it started with self-improvement and just reading books, just like you're talking about. Um, but, the other um, one too I want to add in there real quick is just to not be afraid to ask the stupid questions. Yes. If you think it's a stupid question, I guarantee you somebody else in that space also has that, that question. And if you don't ask it, you're not going to figure it out. So don't be afraid to ask those quote unquote stupid questions uh, because there's people out there that want to support you. So. And Steve, you know, I ask everybody, you're most at the end of a show, you know, how they like to give back. And, and I know, you know, you have this, uh, you know, this amazing component or, or you know, uh, that just how you even word all this, how you give back, uh, the give back component on everything, you know, that you and I talked about. I'd love for you to elaborate on that and, and just share just that mindset as well with the listeners. Yeah, I'd love to. And thanks for this opportunity. You know, uh, giving back is something that we're super passionate about. So like, I think we mentioned earlier that like our motto in our business, um, you can find the hashtag too. It's just go big to give big. And so it, it originally came from reading um, Grant Cardone's 10X book. And so we originally had the game plan of if we can get eight doors, uh, cash flow 500 bucks, you know, uh, per door, then, you know, we can, you know, live decently. And we read the book and we're like, okay, crap, you know, now we have to 10 X that. So 
I hate round numbers for some reason. So I'm like, all right, let's go for 82 doors now. And so we have this goal for 82 doors within five years. And um, so that's, that's kind of where the, the go big piece came from. And we, we started to realize like if, I think the average household income here is that like 70, $80,000 point. Um, and, you know, it's still very, very tight because it's so such a high, um, you know, expense ratio here in, in Victoria. It's very expensive to live here. And so a lot of people don't have a lot to get back to their favorite charities or organizations. So the bigger you can push yourself with either a real estate portfolio or income or, or any other ways you can, you can make some money, the bigger you push yourself, the bigger goals you have gives you the bigger opportunity to, to give back to, to your community, to your family, to create a legacy. Um, we've been hosting a meetup for the last four years and about two years ago or so we joined a, a community called thrive make money matter, which is a, an entrepreneur conference and mastermind. It's the number one conference entrepreneur conference in the world uh, founded by Cole Hatter. And his kind of motto is I want to teach entrepreneurs to make a uh, million dollars. So I know this is him speaking. I know that if I can make, uh, if I can teach entrepreneurs to make a million dollars, making the second million is just as easy. And now you can give that second million back to your favorite charity or organization. Still love a great life lifestyle because you're making a million dollars a year. Uh, but you can also give back a huge amount as well. So, uh, at our meetup, we, we get the events sponsored. Uh, so we're net zero and then we charge people to come 10 bucks for two people. And we take a hundred percent of that, uh, take a revenue and we give that back to a, uh, a sports organization here, here called kids sport. And they help families with kids, uh, get involved with sports. Sports has really crafted us into the, the confident, um, business people that we are and the men that we are. And, um, I think it's been one of the, the best pieces in our lives has been a part of uh, the organized or individual sports. It's taught us a lot about, um, you know, how to, how to win, how to work as a team, how to be goal focused, how to lose and recover from that mindset, the whole works. And so we want to help as many kids get involved with sports as we can. You know, when we sell a property, uh, we, we do stuff as well included in our, 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 um, development deals. We get back to the communities that they're in. Um, and we're just about to, to launch a, a pledge kind of thing here for landlords, um, where it's like $10 a door. So you say, I'm going to pledge that for every door I have every month, I'm going to give 10 bucks, which is pennies. Let's be real, uh, back to, you know, my favorite organization organization. So if it's kids board or if it's, you know, something for coronavirus right now over the next few months, or if it's, you know, an orphanage that you love or pencils for promise or whatever, um, 10 bucks a door, you know, it, uh, you might think that it doesn't really do a difference for me to, you know, given 10 bucks, but we, as a nation, if we all commit to it, then that's a huge amount that we can give back. And, and um, so, yeah, we're, we're super passionate about it. And it's something I love talking about. Obviously you can hear me going like a million miles a minute. So uh, yeah, we, uh, we just believe that community is everything. And when you invest in the community, the community will invest back into you. Mm. Now, thanks for sharing that, Steve. I'm, I'm grateful for your passion for giving back and just the, the motto, go big to give big. I love that. Uh, mm. uh, it's just great. It's great, great stuff. So um, we're not all in it just to have the fancy everything that we can get, you know, so uh, I love just the give back motto. So, uh, but tell the listeners how they can get in touch with you and learn more about you. Yeah, best way is, is, um, is usually just Facebook or Instagram. So you can find me, it's just uh, at Steve Arneson, uh, S-T-E-V-E-A-R-N-E-S-O-N. Or you can find the business, which is at the reinvestors sounds just like it is. Uh, so it's T H E R E investors. And, uh, just send me a DM and say, Hey, you know, let's be on the show and I would love to know this, or thanks for saying that. And, uh, you know, happy to share any kind of knowledge or information that I have with you or connected with pieces as well. So, um, we have websites, just, you know, the reinvestors.ca. Uh, but we're most active on, on social media. Thank you for listening to the Real Estate Syndication Show, brought to you by LifeBridge Capital. LifeBridge Capital works with investors nationwide to invest in real estate, while also donating 50% of its profits to assist parents who are committing to adoption. LifeBridge Capital, making a difference, one investor and one child at a time. Connect online at www.lifebridgecapital.com for free material and videos to further your success.